Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. Man, we've got some more great updates. We've got some good tips. It's exciting times. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything we put out. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. All right, let's dig in. Prathi Kamasani's got a blog post looking at sink slicers and some of the options you have with those. If you're not familiar with sink slicers, hopefully you're familiar with regular slicers and then you can actually choose to view sink slicers which will allow you to sync those, give it that one single slicer across many pages or even on the same page. Prathi goes through and looks at why you would even want to use sync slicers and also some of the more advanced aspects of it which is grouping and how those items work. This is a great blog post if you're not really familiar with sync slicers and or the grouping and you want to get up to speed really quickly to be able to use those inside of your report. So I definitely recommend checking this out if that's something you think you will consider for your reports. So hillboxy has got a blog post titled The Definitive Guide to the On-Premises Data Gateway, looking at the enterprise mode. That is a bold statement, but I read through the blog post. It's got a lot of stuff in there and definitely some great points to consider if you're looking to deploy the enterprise gateway. I've seen some organizations where they're like, yeah, you know, we've got our gateways that we manage and we've got some other folks doing other things, but you know, we it's all running, it's fine. But you should really take time to think about placement, environments, all of these things that come into play with the gateway to make sure that they run functionally and that they don't cause any business interruption. So if you're deploying an on-premises data gateway, I definitely recommend checking out Sohil's blog because he goes through a lot of stuff that you should consider when you're actually going to deploy an on-premises data gateway in an enterprise situation. Links as always down in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Gartner released their Magic Quadrant for analytics and BI platforms and Microsoft is definitely on top. I'm very excited about that because obviously that means Power BI, but one thing I would definitely recommend you do is check out the full report to see, you know, what are some of the things to consider for all the different platforms to make sure that that aligns with your business. I, I'm fully biased on the Power BI side, I will freely admit that, but Power BI does offer a lot of great options for you and your business, both from a platform perspective and integration with other items that you may be running. So definitely check out Power BI, but check out that report and see how the other competitors stack up. The Power BI team has been on a tear for the last three weeks. So this is the third week where we've gotten some updates around exporting options. So the first week it was a new email subscription update in terms of what, how it looks and how you can actually schedule those email subscriptions. The second week we got export to PDF, which was awesome. This last week we got the actual ability to keep filtered aspects of the export for both PDF and PowerPoint. Everyone's been asking for this. So this means that when I go to export the PDF or PowerPoint, it will retain the filter context. So that's slicers, filters, bookmarks, whatever. It'll actually do that. It gives you a few options. So you'll be able to actually determine, do you want your current view or the current values, or do you want the default values? And then whether or not you wanna export the hidden pages. So this is awesome. This is definitely go check this out. Let me know down in the comments below if you're as excited about this item as I am. A lot of folks wanted this. It is now here. This was a whirlwind three weeks of awesome updates. We got the Power BI Service and Mobile January 2019 update. So it's just kind of a roundup of everything that happened in January. It's a great consolidation blog post. Just highlight some of the items that were in this update. So we had Secure Embed, we had the new email subscriptions that I mentioned before. We also got personal bookmarks, some updates for data flows, and a lot more items. So if you haven't been keeping up, definitely check out this blog post just to see what's happened in the service over the last month. 
The February 2019 version of Power BI Desktop was released this last week. We didn't have a new service version of Power BI Desktop in January because Power BI Report Server had a release, so it was tied to that. But this month, we've got a brand new hot off the press version of Power BI Desktop that comes with new features, of course. One of the things I see a lot of people talking about with the February 2019 desktop release is the key influencer visual. This visual is highlighting some of the work that the AI team is doing and we'll run AI directly on the data as part of this visual. So you can drag in two different items into the visual and it will compare to see what those influencers were. It's pretty cool. This is a preview feature, so make sure that you've enabled that preview feature with inside of the options, and then you can give this visual a try. Some other items in this month's desktop. So there were formatting options for the new filter pane, we had rounded corners on visuals. There was word wrapping on titles, which I saw a lot of buzz on. So those are some cool things that you can do from an actual visual like interaction report design perspective. There were some updates for Q&A, which included some insight questions, as well as some auto-suggested questions based on your data, and also some improvements to the Python and R visual script editor. Lots of other items available. Go check out the blog down in the description below for all of the updates in this month's Power BI Desktop and make sure you're updated to the latest version. And if you're not sure how to do that, I got a video up here that will help you out. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Is it something I mentioned? Was it something I didn't? I'd love to hear about it. For myself, I've gotta go with the new export capabilities where it retains the filtering items. I love it. This has been asked for for a long time. But again, let me know down below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.